Hi everyone, welcome to our Friday TNT. Somehow we've got through this week here from Almaty in Kazakhstan. We'll be doing our live program here again tomorrow, probably here because we can have a, a quiet time together. If I do it outside, then uh, the, the Kazakh people are going to walk past w wondering who this babbling bald guy speaking in English is, is going on about. I'm heading to an event on the weekend uh, that's being held here in Almaty. Uh, more about that later, but we've got our live program tomorrow between 9 and 10 a.m. Thai time which is 7 to 8, I think, Kazakh time. I'll have to get up early and put my makeup on. Uh, then on Sunday, our final grumpy old men for now. Uh, and then I'm back. I fly sort of overnight Sunday night and then arrive back on Monday. And a very busy day on Monday. Anyway, for now, let's get stuck into a very quick analysis of what happened with the, uh, the Senate election. Because the people in the upper house are the final tick when it comes to legislation, uh, things about immigration, things about visas. I mean, these people will decide the way that we travel and live here in the country, ultimately. So let's have a quick look. And the Election Commission Secretary General Sawang Boon Mi said yesterday, the formal announcement of 200 newly elected senators will be made on July the 3rd, so we'll have to wait uh, another week. There have been over 600 complaints related to election regularities so far. He advised the complaints that should be made within three days of the election. Let's go to this also from the Calsod English Facebook page. And the Move Forward Party leader gave the newly elected Senate bit of a thumbs down yesterday, said the majority were connected to politicians. He added this leads to the question of whether having a Senate in the future is necessary. Every time the Move Forward Party speaks about constitutional changes, it doesn't usually end well for them. Let's get some general coverage about this from the Bangkok Post. They report that Pumjai Thai is a player in the new election. Pumjai Thai, of course, is the second largest uh, group in the coalition. More than a few of the 200 senators elect seemingly have political party affiliations, notably with the Pumjai Thai Party. This is according to a quick review of the unofficial results. This graphic shows a quick analysis of what happened, and uh, if we go by the actual provinces, 14 senators in Buriram. Now, Buriram is the, the sort of the home of Pumjai Thai up there in the northeast. So uh, interesting that Buriram got the lion's share of uh, some of the senators when it comes to provinces. Of course, Bangkok figures well. And then you've got all those other uh, provinces there represented with the, the number of senators. And here are some of the, uh, the faces, some of the winners. And we've got a former commander of the 4th Army. We've got a former governor of Ang Tong, former member of the Election Commission, human rights activist, a, a media scholar, a veteran journalist, a labour scholar, a former political science lecturer and a former MP for Konkan. So I would have thought this is exactly the sort of range of different ties that they would have wanted in this new Senate. So it seems broadly that they may have achieved exactly what they wanted. And well, of course, most of them not connected to the military. And the story notes that a former Prime Minister Somchai, a brother-in-law of former PM Taksin Shinawat, was not among those elected. Many political observers had anticipated him becoming the Senate Speaker. And this is important to note, unlike their predecessors, the new senators will not be empowered to co-elect a prime minister. They will take part in the passage of legislation and amendments to laws and the constitution. They'll also be responsible for appointing members of independent organisations and checking the performance of the executive branch of government. That's the lower house. So the new Senate horse race has been run and won and sometime next week we'll probably know the final result. But an interesting mix of people, including, interestingly enough, a lot of people from that uh, Pum Jai Thai family up in the northeast of Thailand. And that's uh, sort of connected to the more conservative side of Thai politics. OK, now time to head to Samui. And a Samui task force cracks down on 52 foreign villas with hidden rentals. We were reporting a few weeks ago about an investigating starting in Samui with officials noting uh, looking up on the hills around Samui some unusually uh, large numbers of new villas and condos that, uh, well, they didn't really know much about. Looks like the investigation has borne fruit. 
The task force addressing state land encroachment on Samui is preparing to prosecute the owners of 52 villas for violating three laws, the Hotel Act, the Environment Act and the Building Control Act. And the next paragraph saying that they were violating environmental and building control laws and some properties were also operating as unlicensed hotels. An investigation shows that uh, Chinese investors leased land for 30 years from Thai companies to build villas for sale to foreigners and rent out nightly through a vacation rental company uh, without proper hotel registration. As we know, these Thai companies that were set up that then leased the land for 30 years, it could be 30 by 30, well, with the, the current arrangement, uh, these are often Thai nominee companies where the Thai nominees control 51% of the company and then the, uh, the Chinese, in this case, the other 49%. So they never really own the company, but the way the company's uh, structured uh, gives them the basic control. But this is illegal. And a Russian tourist staying at one villa informed officials that they'd booked online with a foreign owner paying 3,500 baht per night for four nights. Fairly elaborate looking villas there built on a slope. That wouldn't have been a cheap build. So some video there published on the Kalsod English uh, YouTube page showing more villas. I'm betting that those 52 villas are really just the very, very tip of the iceberg. And the, the Thai government's got a real problem confronting them with just so many illegal villas currently being built, not only in Samui, but around the country, and with such a small staff to investigate and prosecute them. Well, it is going to be a very long process unwinding this. And just quickly thanking our sponsors, Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinepuket.com, also Beach House Thailand. There's uh, links in the description below for uh, a way that you can get out onto Pangar Bay, a special deal for TNT viewers. Also the, uh, the Airbnb links for those beach houses on uh, the Thai Mung Beach in Pangar. Let's head up to Patia now, another tourist hotspot. PattiaMail.com reporting Pattaya Bally High Pier cleaned up following Prime Minister's directive. Looks like they're all hard at work there. A lot of tourists get to see this, well, so-called beach, but it did need cleaning up. And following a directive from the PM Seita Tawisin during his recent visit to Pattaya, the city launched comprehensive clean-up efforts around the Bali High Pier in South Pattaya. A team comprising sanitation and waste management officers, alongside other relevant personnel, I suggest a lot of volunteers as well, have been deployed to address various infrastructure issues. And the focus of the cleanup includes repairing and organising damaged street lights, communication cables and CCTV wires around the pier. Additionally, the team is actively collecting stones and debris that have been washed ashore by seawater. And ornamental plants are also being strategically placed to enhance the aesthetic appeal of the area. So, so many tourists who visit the Pattaya area would be likely to go to the Bali High Pier at one stage or another to uh, take a boat to head out to the islands. But it does look like the facilities are improving their Bali High Pier walkway roof to be completed by August, according to the Deputy Mayor. So it's saying that they hope to have the Bali High Pier walkway roof uh, finished by the end of August and uh, the pier renovation project will already be completed by the contractor. The walkway roof project will begin on July the 6th, expected to be finished by, expected to be finished by the end of August. Well, let's hope that the new walkway there and the improved facilities and the infrastructure might somehow fix the taxi problems there as well. It's one of those locations where uh, there are some uh, well-developed taxi wars. And from Pattaya down to Pangar in the south of Thailand, and this reported by the PuketExpress.com, portion of Pangar Mountain collapses in public park following a minor earthquake. Wouldn't want to have been walking along there at the time. Let's see what the story says. A mountain in a public park in Mung, a Panga district, collapsed after an earthquake was reported in the nearby area, despite the earthquake being minor. But park officials say that the collapse could have been due to recent heavy rains and not the small earthquake. 
or a combination of the two. Now, this happened at the very, very top of Panga Bay in the province of Panga, just north of Phuket. And huge broken rocks were brought down by the collapse and blocked some walkways in the park. The area was temporarily blocked by officials to the general public for safety. It says the mountain is a limestone with a high slope and heavy rain had continued during the past week. The rock could not support its own heavy weight and then collapsed. Luckily, there was nobody around during the collapse. Nobody was injured. And that brings us to the end of today's quick uh, whip around of the main news stories from around Thailand. Thank you for watching. If you get a chance, please subscribe to the channel. And tomorrow we've got our live program between 9 and 10... Uh, Thai time. Gee, I hope I get that right. I'm just a bit confused with the time at the moment. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you on Sunday with Grumpy Old Men and of course back next week. Have no idea how I'm going to be doing my Monday program, but we'll figure that out over the next few days. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.